we've suffered too long. <laughs> <laughs> you see those <laughs> over there? You see them? Yeah. Right here? <laughs> They have done absolutely nothing wrong, but they're blue. <laughs> I've always hated the color blue. You know why? Why? No reason. <laughs> <laughs> With all that being said, we have to kill them. Alrighty then. Hey everybody, Slasher here, and welcome to Rim Job. Wait, hang on a minute. So recently, I had another community poll to decide which game that we would be doing next, and this time around the winner was RimWorld. I had already known a bit about RimWorld before starting due to watching other channels play it, but I had never played it myself. Nevertheless, I had already a general idea of what I was getting myself into. RimWorld is a fairly unique colony sim with a great deal of both common and more esoteric elements to it. It has things like taming animals, making your own guns and armor, raiding and defending from other factions, genetically modified people, racism to and from said genetically modified people, cannibalism, giant insects, mental illness, war crimes, slavery, genocide with very little repercussions, organ harvesting. Overall, just a whole lot of wholesome fun, and thus I packed my bags from the constant, kidnapped some DST characters for free slave labor, and made my way to the rim in order to collect a new genetic army of people that would obey my every order. And now suck my dick. So I chose Crash Landed as my scenario, put myself somewhere where I feel I would be the center of attention, and chose my three colonists. Wilson, the resident scientist of Don't Starve. A man skilled in food, science, and guns would be an ideal first pick. Winona, a builder and sister to the main antagonist of Don't Starve, who was skilled in construction, mining, and Obamacare. And finally, Napoleon, an animal farmer. Among us! And with the ideal crew from the constant barreling down on the world, I strapped down for what would certainly be a very long playthrough. Well, let's just hope they know how to split the gear. Oh, dude, I got a, I got a dog. Wait, hang on, I gotta rename him. Slasher was unable to rename the dog. Okay, so, so start by just getting basic materials, right? Oh wait, we already have basic materials. My first few days were pretty uneventful, making a bedroom slash storage room in one and setting up a rice farm not too far away. I also learned how to make a fridge during my time in the tutorial, so I got to work making that as well. And then a trader came to visit us. Oh, we have a visitor? We have a visitor. Napoleon, smooth talker. So from what I'm seeing, she has a whole lot of nothing. But now we got a mad squirrel. He should be able to deal with him just fine. Yeah, see, he one-tapped him. We're almost done building it. Oh wait, it's time to name my faction. Okay, I gotta come up with a clever name for this. A gold meteor landed, and then we suffered a raid, though it was just a single guy who Napoleon kicked in the ribs but with a knife while Winona was shooting at him. And then we locked him inside a piece of the ruins by our house as a makeshift prison cell after we stabilized him. But well, there we go, we have our first prisoner. We should probably harvest him for his organs though. Can I sell purr to him? No, they won't buy purr. Dang it. Yeah, we'll do a guana meat. A, gu a guana meat sounds good. We can do a guana meat. Wait, we got a we got a quest. Wait, is this from the Empire? Yeah, it is. Astioscos. <laughs> Wait until they see what Napoleon has in store for them. But Napoleon isn't very psychically sensitive. Yeah, fuck it, let's do it anyway. The Empire quest was largely uneventful. Napoleon punched a raccoon to death, and this farm tool helped us tend the rice fields for a few hours. We began researching, and we also gave some money to some beggars just so they'd leave us alone. We probably should have eaten them in hindsight. Okay. 50 bucks! 20 bucks! 70! Alright, so now that we got uh, most of our basic needs under requirement, well, at least, like, for... for well, we're, we're actually kind of on the verge of starving to death, but we're, we're, we're doing fine. We're, we're, we're getting through it. These early days were largely uneventful. Wilson tried several times to sleep with Winona, all of which she rejected him, and we kept getting raided by these drug-addicted wasters. Now, wasters kind of suck because you have to have drugs in order to keep them, so you can't exactly have them as slaves. So with all these drug addicts, I did the one reasonable thing. I started eating the drug addicts. And after buying copious amounts of mushrooms from the local traders, I decided I would begin construction on an actual living quarters for my colonists. I think we've made enough room so that we can start constructing the mega structure. Well, that, like that, kind of. That should be good right there, and, and then it kind of looks like up and roofity. 
And I think that's good for now. This this general structure should be good enough. Just in case, I am gonna break this stuff though, cause... Actually, break that first, cause it doesn't explode. Surely that won't blow up in my face. Okay, there we go. And now there's a huge fire. No, the apartment complex is burning. What do I do? How do I get rid of the fire? Wait, no, don't, don't go down there. Go up there. Yay, rain came in clutch. Oh, oh, Winona, Winona's hiding in a room because her room sucks, because the barracks is awful. Yeah, go ahead, go for it, you fucking crybaby. Another crash survivor, you say? Well, I say. Oh, lunch, you're so funny. I also think I want to set up like a little, um, like a little farm in the middle of this. I understand that there's like this thing called hydro hydroponics, but I haven't gotten to it yet. But I figured if we could make like a hydroponics thing, it would be in here. Oh crap, like half the map's still on fire. Oh, hey, grown one spot sprouted. Oh, cool. Yeah, harvest that. Ah, uh, wait. Or Oh, they're furries. Okay, um. Oh, good. The Empire's helping us. Even though we're gonna destroy them later, but. <laughs> they just suffered a crap ton of friendly fire. <laughs> oh, wait, that was our guy. Okay, never mind. And we can take their kidneys. No, I just want to swap out her. Just take his organs. Cut his organs out. He doesn't need them. Look, he's fine. He doesn't need organs. He hasn't been using them this whole time. Okay, guys, here it comes. Here it comes. I think this is about to go down. Did we get it? We got his kidneys! Yes! Oh, they took my freaking kidney. Can we can we take his arms too? Can we? What all can we take from him? Tell me he's not gonna go around and kill people. Wilson, don't, don't stop fighting the shadow creatures in the middle of the barracks, Wilson. This isn't going too well. There's vomit and dead bodies everywhere. And after several botched surgeries of trying to steal more of Purr's organs, we actually enslaved him in the process. Though admittedly, I was getting a little too into the organ harvesting game. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves. Heart. Wait, did we get it? Damn it! And fortunately, we're already recycling every part of the body. Wilson's already taking him over to the operating table. Bad kitty. Wilson, 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 please don't kill the dog. And he just killed the dog. The one-person raids continued for the immediate future. I made a chair out of human skin. We began to learn machining technology, and more of those Yadakin kept attacking us now, who we would then eat shortly after. Oh, also, I finished the housing complex. And we're just about done. I finished my uh, design for my house. There should be enough room to handle everybody in here. I didn't really make it any specific shape, but I feel like this one should work pretty well. More furries, more wild animals. I started making bricks because I wanted to build a wall around my entire base, and I learned from the tutorial that making that out of steel is a really fucking stupid thing to do. This willow main showed up, but we shot it to death before it could light anything on fire. We laid out the framework for an actual prison, and this violent kamikaze rat tried to break into the house. Dude, why are so many wild people walking in? Wait, hang on, maybe this one's better. Is this one a human? No, it's another imp. And the furry just went hostile. Bad dog. Bad dog. Loser's losing her mind because she's starving to death, essentially. Wait, is she about to pick a fight with the boom rat? <laughs> that was awesome. Unfortunately, Napoleon had a boner party, and in a moment of weakness, broke the foreskin chair. However, we arrested the wild willow mane from earlier, and then tamed her, giving us our fourth constant colonist. We also planted a Garamlin tree, researched prosthetics because Napoleon lost his leg in the war. Willow was interesting to use in these early fights as she could breathe fire on people from a pretty far distance. The tree accepted Napoleon as its new boyfriend, I got started on windmill electricity, and the tree gave birth to little tree bebes. As I began to get to work on electricity outside of the refrigerator, I was starting to get a component shortage too, which my progress was even more impeded by the animal attacks that were happening every 30 seconds all throughout winter. Also, this young kid wanted to join us, so we took him on as a cooking slave, but he wasn't very good and he kept giving everyone food poisoning. Let me get up! Man, it all looks good. I'm pretty sure he just got food poisoning from his own food, but that's... 
That's neither here nor there. Um, another food poisoning. Y you know what? It it's not. It's not. It's not Cello's fault. He needs to learn how to do it. Ironically, at this point, I think it would be safer just to eat the food raw. And we're also getting raided. And of course, he's not actually doing anything. He's just coming over to light shit on fire. Eventually, I got a machining table and a smithy up and started making some log suits. I made Napoleon a new leg and got that installed for him. The Groenland tree's dryads also matured and got to work moving stuff. I researched geothermal power on account of the veins surrounding my base. We also had another drug addict raid and took another prisoner. And you know what that means. Heart, heart lungs, lungs liver, 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 nerves, heart, heart lungs, lungs, liver, liver. nerves. Uh, looks like Rusty's a little bit sad that we're taking his organs. Because I kept stealing their organs, my prisoners kept trying to escape, and I accidentally killed one with the firing squad. Come on! What? The we have a runner! Free! <laughs> heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. The Divine sent down a new chef for me as I was getting sick of all this goddamn food poisoning. I accepted this quest that let some useless colonists come live with us for a couple of days, who refused to help with anything. We got to work on the brick wall surrounding the base, I bought a bunch of meat from traders because we were all starving to death, and I experienced the economic power of selling organs firsthand. We got attacked by the first Neanderthals, powerful stocky humanoids with good defense and melee damage, but virtually nothing ranged. They almost killed us all. And then some rabid boom raps came over, and unfortunately the child cello that came to stay with us didn't survive the blast radius, and they died. Uh, 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 cello, cello blew up in the explosion. We didn't even have a chance to bury him because I think he burned in the fire. I finally got around to actually building those log suits. Spring came around again and we started farming a comical amount of potatoes. That one resource leech I mentioned earlier finally fucked off. I started hydroponics though, I didn't know at first you needed sun lamps for them to work. Since we have a proper chef now, we started cooking better food too. Some more organs, I mean raiders, arrived and we dealt with them pretty easily. And then I taunted one of them while they slowly died of infection. Oh, is she gonna make it? Is she gonna make it? Ooh, just short. You gotta be quicker than that. More wild animals attacked, we ate them. More Wookiees showed up, we ate them. Heart, lungs, liver, nerve. We tried to befriend this turtle, but it wasn't having any of Napoleon's shit. I built several sun lamps, which immediately caused my whole colony to undergo an energy crisis. It didn't help that a group of organs broke two of my four windmills. I sold their organs in order to buy two rocket launchers that I never used. Also, Larissa died. I think just having one person act is kind of like a tank. Works really well. Oh, never mind, she's dead. We had a really shitty funeral for Larissa, a bunch of milk fell from the sky, and I installed a geothermal generator on top of a geyser so it would start generating infinite electricity by gargling the planet's thick, warm steam. Watch me protect you from this burning steam vent! This seems some slavers showed up and I purchased a Neanderthal that I would sub in for Wolfgang because he had good melee damage or something, I don't know. The geothermal gargler fixed my power issues after I removed my power issues by turning off most of the sun lamps. I had also designated a trash can outside of the front of the base for all the dead bodies we were getting, and with the first part of my hydroponic setup, I could grow food all through the winter, making sure that I don't starve. More Wookiees came to attack us, but since I had hydroponics now and in turn year-long crops, I decided to turn some of the Wookiees into farm tools. Oh wait, we can <laughs> we can we can hammer the buffalo. <laughs> nice. Uh, you gotta be quicker than that, buddy. And Napoleon is making parkas out of human leather. We encountered our first pigmen raid, and they had guns and grenades with them. We killed them all because Napoleon is the one true leader to the pigmen. Also, we finished the wall around the base. There was a tomb inside the base that I broke into, and it had a bunch of robots inside who started trying to sell us car insurance. We killed them all by slowly luring them out one by one and hitting them with the firing squad. Afterwards, I opened up the crypto sleep pods and a bunch of people and like a dozen or so small bugs that were inside started vomiting everywhere. So, me being the Xenos Arthropodal Supremacist I am, I of course began taming all of the bugs and soon had a sizable infantry force. I researched microelectronics and I had set up a defensible position at an opening in my wall so the enemies would funnel there. Also, I realized I might have fucked myself into a corner by making more hydroponics. The thing is, in RimWorld, you can research something that lets you make your own components for building. However, it needs a special research table that itself requires components to build. The hydroponics I just finished building also costed components. Do you see the issue here? A real go-get-the-power-saw type situation. 
You were supposed to cut it out with the power saw. Dude, I'm gonna. Oh, really? Fuck you! A bunch of my bugs got diseases, so we had to treat them. We crafted some sculptures, because apparently it makes people happy. And in a wild pig attack, I learned the value of the scarabs, as they will gang attack anything that gets close to my colonists while they shoot. Also, they eat unattended corpses. Quit having fun! No! Freddy Fazbear just ate one of my scarabs! Well, this can't be forgiven. R R R R R. I crushed a slave rebellion by crushing the slaves in rebellion, I beat a rape by beating those raiding me, and the scarab army helped me for both, bless their little insecty souls. Heart, lungs, liver, nerves, heart. Another raid of imps that were too stupid to use doors and one of them had decent plans so I kept them as a slave. A bunch of horses just decided that they wanted to join us so I built a pen for them. I got another trader and decided to buy a reinforced barrel which can be used to make mortars, as I learned that mortars are actually really good to use when I go on raids. Where did I learn this? Well... I went on the internet. I agreed to let the Empire pollute my land in exchange for a free chemical fuel generator. This lady who likes to roleplay as a dead body wanted to join my colony, so I threw her in a hospital bed and just forgot about her. More Neanderthals came, but this time we were ready for them. And by we, I mean my bug army. Turns out it's really hard for Neanderthals to fight in melee combat when half of their face is stuck inside of a bug's mouth. Finally, I decided to give the world map a look and put together my first caravan to go explore a small area of the map. Using the horses that joined us, we speedily made it over there for to search for components. There were no components. Oh, fuck! Those pigs I kept warning about started getting a little bit more bold as this time around they decided to drop Pod directly into my base. I'm sure they were confident in their plans up until my horde of bug friends tore them to pieces. I found a trader that finally sold components, so I bought them all, along with an LMG because usually LMGs mean a lot of bullets. With year-round farming, my fridge was now filled to the brim with vegetables. I made a second trash can for the toxic packs in the top right corner of the map, and they started irradiating the area there. And one of the farm tools, I mean Wookiees, killed a scarab in a slave rebellion, so as punishment, we executed him via organ removal. Bye-bye, Sheen. This is your own fault. Somebody gave cocaine to a muffalo? I put together a secondary caravan to go attack another potential source of components. This time we killed everyone there, but there were still no components, so I reloaded. I got bold to try and attack the pig's main base, as their past two attacks were very weak. I got there and oh my god, it wasn't even close. They slaughtered us. So I reloaded again. I decided that the issue was that I needed more LMGs, so that's what I got to work making afterwards. Two of the traders visiting us got into a fist fight, so I stole the unconscious one's rifle. Wolfgang tried to tame a Megatherium, but stuck the food into the wrong hole. I accepted a quest for the joining of McKinney, later renamed to Wes, who would come to be known as the most useless colonist of this entire playthrough, as I was blinded by the prospect of easy organs and free labor. Two of the Yatakin that I managed to harvest from the attack were both talented in melee, so I decided to keep both of them as bullet sponges for future invasions. Also, Elise finally woke up, so I got her to work immediately on doing a bunch of random tasks. Hey, you. Finally away. Agreed to harbor a war criminal for a fancy looking hat? A trader finally had enough components to satisfy my constructions and I was able to build the lab we needed. The first mechanoid raid happened. I accepted a quest from the Empire to kill a bunch of snakes because they gave Napoleon a mind reader. They actually sent me four soldiers to do it as well, which I promptly used to destroy the mechanators. Some of the soldiers fell down and I stole their guns not knowing what biocoding was or that I wouldn't be able to use them. The snakes arrived, we pillaged the snakies, and I let some of the soldiers die on purpose thinking that I would at least get their armor. I didn't as the armor melted off them immediately when they died. Now, some people may think what I, the way I dealt with our bodyguards was a little bit morbid, but please understand, we all have LMGs now. Wait, hang on, what? We broke the sadness generator. Napoleon got the psychic thing put in his brain. A heat wave destroyed a third of all the food in my fridge. I sent War Criminal away and got my football helmet. That Megatherium from earlier decided it was the right hole after all and decided to join us. I gave Wolfgang and Willow their appropriate titles. Mechanoids started coming around pretty consistently now and they were getting to be a headache to deal with. I agreed to build a monument for the Empire because they gave me an assault rifle for it. I purchased another rocket launcher that I never used by funding it with people's organs. Also, these thrombos came into my base and hung out for a while. I tried taming them since they won't attack you if you fail, but we failed every attempt. Well, time for plan B. R R R R R R. I kept failing at taming combat animals, and I only had the one mega sloth on my side, so I resorted to genociding the local wildlife population so more animals would hopefully spawn. Fortunately, we were also almost a component building. My wildlife plan actually ended up working and another mega sloth spawned, but it wasn't willing to join us anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
and soon we had fabrication done and I was able to make my own components. We tried another attack on the pigskins, and although it went much better than last time, it still wasn't quite where it needed to be. And coming back home, an insect infestation spawned in my base, though these weren't like the scarabs I tamed. These ones were hostile. We destroyed a mechanoid stronghold near the base, and Napoleon threw a rager in the storage closet. We finally got the component production underway, and I realized I needed to do something about the infestation. However, as I observed the mega spiders, I felt the cry of a webermane calling to me. What if I tamed all these mega spiders and used them to tip the next raid in my favor? The only problem is these spiders are hostile and will attack while being tamed. Therefore, I came up with the systematic solution of isolating the mega spiders by either maiming them or killing most of their allies, often both, and taking them to an isolated position and having one of my slaves do all the taming. And after locking our first patient in a wooden hut and tending to him just enough to stop the bleeding, I had my prized farm tool, Sharsh, go in and tame him. The taming was a success. We were officially now a Weber main. Also, a creature whose race is called a dirt mole showed up as a wild, so I immediately killed them. I know a moleworm conspirator when I see one. As I was about to go pillage the rest of the hives, I learned that insects will actually respawn from the meme if you give them enough time, meaning I can continue to separate and tame more mega spiders if I'm patient, effectively giving me my own spider army. And after a few days worth of taming, I had eight mega spiders to my name. Some plasteel landed in my potato fields, we got attacked by mechanators again for like the eighth time in the past ten fucking minutes, and I learned how to and started building those LMGs I mentioned earlier. And after equipping every single one of my ranged colonists with very inaccurate yet powerful machine guns, I decided to test them on a quest for an extremely vicious raid of farm to I mean Yadakin. I wasn't exactly accurate, but it most certainly worked. I saw Wookiees being turned into pin cushions in a matter of seconds with how many bullets were flying. I accepted a quest for a sanguifage to land on my colony, not really knowing what a sanguifage was at the time, but at this point I was collecting slaves like the fucking Infinity Stone, so I didn't really think too much about it. Turns out, a sanguifage is a vampire, and it even comes with its own thralls. Ironically, she got most of her allies and herself down by a pack of insects before I even had to defend myself from her. I then had her thrown at a cage as I'm pretty sure with her vampiric abilities that she would be an invaluable meat shield for my future attacks. And I began taking blood from one of the other prisoners to make sure she was well fed. She then immediately tried to escape in which she was met with another volley of bullets from my LMG infantry. Reading the Sanguifage's dossier, apparently they can't die unless their head is cut off, so to experiment, I ordered all of my colonists to kick her several thousand times to see if this was accurate, up until somebody accidentally punted her head off. I concluded the experiment by reloading, I tamed another spider, and we recruited the vampire as the on-site Wigfrid main. Also, Napoleon got an inspired taming, and finally got us a female Megasloth by using his powers of shaking rice in its face. And some of the slaves attempted to escape again, so he had to re-educate them with bullets. Maybe now you'll think twice about breaking the law. You shot five bullets, so she'll think twice next time? Yeah, it could have been less, but I fired with my eyes closed. Little inside challenge down at the precinct. A bunch of imps decided to attack during the winter for some reason, even though the winter is the time where they should be at their weakest. They were ironically smart enough to actually break down a wall instead of attacking from the front though. However, they didn't really make it past the machine gun fire. Breaking the wall was a strategy that the Neanderthals copied. Unfortunately for them, I had just used the hidden strategy of machine gun fire again. When Oda then got her nose broken off, which had the hidden plus side of Wilson no longer wanting to sleep with her, I started building machine gun turrets and setting them up at entrances for my base. I also took some of that plasteel that came in the meteor that hit and turned it into plate armor. I thought with my machine guns, armor, and vampire acting as a Wigfrid main, I was ready to give a raid another try. So we attacked the Yadakin settlement to the north of our base. Unfortunately, they had a mortar with them, so in an attempt to prevent my forces from getting turned into hamburger meat, I moved them right next to the base out of the mortar's range. However, the Yadakin had copied our strategy of giving every capable fighter a machine gun, and, well, you know what happened. In an act of pure cope, I decided to reload and attack the pig skins again, immediately thinking maybe it was just the mortar that pushed it over the edge. Fortunately, I was right, and we had finally managed to destroy our first faction, forcing the pig skins off Napoleon's land. Every other faction strangely approved of me doing it, too. McKinney decided to resort to alcoholism after the fight, earning the name of Wes for herself, and there was another prison break while we were gone. Fortunately, Matthew had it under control. Shut your mouth before I blow your fucking brains out on the tile floor! No, no, please don't! I'm sorry! My pet vampire decided to fall asleep for a few days after we got back. I accepted a quest to babysit two boars for a long time in exchange for a free Hussar, a genetically engineered soldier that seemed almost robotic in nature. I had a feeling they'd fit right in. 
A bunch of bears came to attack us. Can't remember why, though. I think somebody called one of them Freddy and started barking at him, and he just lost it. My sloths started making smaller sloths. I built some drop pods, and the Yada can attack us yet again. Funnily enough, though, this time by drop podding directly inside of our own prison. Was this unexpected? Absolutely. Was this even remotely effective or helpful on their part? I don't know. Ask the delicious pile of corpses littering the prison entrance. I got attacked by the 48th Mechanitor invasion in the past 30 seconds, and I learned precision rifling, as although it's a great deal of fun to accidentally hit non-combatants when I'm firing a volley of bullets at my opponents, I also keep committing a great deal of friendly fire, enough to the point to where I can accurately be labeled as a Skaven clan. And since that's a video for another day, we got to work on the assault rifles. In the meantime, a massive horde of cats attacked the colony that probably has nothing to do with the fact that I cook, eat, and blend cat girls into protein powder on a daily basis. You what? We obliterated a component mining site and plundered the plunder, even though we can make our own components now. There was yet another goddamn Mechanitor invasion. We finished babysitting the pet pigs, and we received our very own pet Hussar. The thing about them is that although they are great soldiers, they suck at anything that isn't construction, and they also have a chronic drug addiction. Fortunately, I had plenty of drugs to keep them occupied at the moment. More thrombos, I failed to tame them. And although getting up close with the Yatakan didn't work the first time, I had the idea of drop potting on top of the Yatakan and getting close to them that way instead. It didn't work the second time either. Another prison break, yeah, we all know how that ends. And I built a mortar of my own, loaded it with the most dangerous shell I could find, and put it inside a drop pod with Napoleon. And then a whole army of Mechanitor Militor showed up, armed with shotguns, to try and ruin my attack. Fortunately, we hadn't stayed yet, so we tried to fight them off. Turns out, Militors are basically mad alpacas with guns, and they don't bleed, and you can turn them into steel, and they aren't as fast. So basically, not mad alpacas. Overall, though, it was a fairly tough fight, but we were able to outshoot them with our new assault rifles, and plus, I made more proper armor and shields for my melee units. Needless to say, we didn't have to worry about steel for the next few days. After healing our wounds, we began our drop pot assault on the farm tools. Napoleon set up a mortar in the bottom corner of the map, we fucking nuked them, and they immediately chased us to try and pay us back for our war crimes. We were prepared though, with our assault rifles and human walnuts, we also had range on them for the most part, and with our military-like formation, we systematically shot them off the board until they began fleeing in terror, meaning I had now destroyed two of the three bases I planned on destroying. I was going to take this guy as a prisoner, but decided ultimately that it would take too much effort to bring back, so we just let him burn to death. We did steal his marine armor, though. I granted Matthew the title of Woody and the Sanguifage the title of Wigfrid. There was a trader selling a Masterwork minigun and a plasma sword, to which I bought both. Napoleon obviously got the minigun, and Wigfrid got the sword. I loaded another nuke into the mortar shell, and we were ready. I had one final plan to deal with the Empire, but I couldn't use the pods because, for some reason, I couldn't put animals inside of them, so we had to travel on foot. What was this master plan I'm speaking of? Well, you may notice that all the spiders I've been collecting periodically throughout this whole playthrough are traveling in it, along with the other constant survivors. Now let me ask you something. Is there any character in the Don't Starve cinematic universe that would be able to do such a thing? Any character that specializes in taming and utilizing hordes of spiders for combat? Okay, yeah, we all know I'm talking about Weber. So our opening stages of invasion played out like the previous invasion. We arrived, I put the one person who got food poisoning on a mortar, and we proceeded to nuke the Imperials. However, this time the Imperials coming into attack were far more competent than the Attican. They had hammers, and lasers, and shields like us. And that's where the final piece of this plan came in. Napoleon stepped in with his new minigun and activated his ability, turning all the Mega Spiders hostile, allowing him and the Constant to tear down the horde of charging mongrel dogs of the Empire, solidifying Napoleon's secret identity this whole time as a devout Weber main. It very quickly turned from a fair battle to a systematic slaughter as I watched Imperial soldiers be shot full of lead by our ace marksmen while they were also being torn to pieces by the Mega Spiders. I'm not going to lie and say that it didn't make me slightly hungry while watching it. All the gear on most of the dead bodies seemed to melt after we had killed them all in the end, meaning we didn't get any feasible benefit. But the Empire was destroyed, and we did it using Don't Starve tactics. And a large amount of war crimes. But after we mopped up the survivors of the Empire who didn't have a chance to run away because they were too busy being eaten by spiders, I consider this a job well done and concluded my first episode of RimWorld, as now I feel as though I am competent enough to actually run a challenge or idea from you all in this game. If you enjoyed this video, or you want to see more RimWorld content from me in the future, please let me know with a comment down below. I have plenty more ideas for this game, and I would love to give this game another run, now that I have the base idea of it down. But until then, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.